children of the bath chair, we have it often have it curl and Marcel. Jade earrings are exceedingly popular, and we often have brooches and dinner rings to match. How to dress one's hair is also a problem for the Chinese lady. Some of us have remained royal to the lovely sleek Chinese quarter, while others have been won over by the modern barb. We each have solved the problem in a different way. She said, I prefer to keep my hair long and dress it in a truly Chinese way, with a flower at the side. The earrings and the buttons of her coat match and are richly jeweled. Hong Kong, the hub of the Orient, is strategically situated at the junction of international trade routes, where the itinerant peoples of two hemispheres vie with each other commercially and socially, in settings that are Chinese by tradition and British by possession. Less than a hundred years ago, a few British ships dropped anchor in this harbor and endeavored to negotiate trade with China, the so-called Celestial Kingdom which had persistently refused to open its gates to the outside world. Peaceful negotiations proving in vain, a war followed, and as a result, Great Britain received an indemnity of six million dollars on the island of Hong Kong, which is now a most important link in the world's greatest chain of empire. Before the arrival of the British, Hong Kong was a desolate island infested with pirates and smugglers and overrun with pestilence. Under Great Britain's rule, it has been miraculously transformed into one of the greatest seaports in the world, through which passes about a billion dollars worth of shipping every year. Ships from all parts of the world sail in and out of this harbor at regular intervals, but in spite of the modern craft, the poor Chinese families cling to their junks and sampans, as they have been doing for centuries, completely indifferent to the innovations of time and progress. The story is told that in former days, little boys were carefully tied to the sampans, while little girls were allowed to run free. The conclusion being that if a girl baby fell overboard and was drowned, it wouldn't make much difference. Thanks to British influence, however, this cruel custom is no longer practiced. The whole gamut of human life is often passed upon these sampans, birth, marriage, and death, within sight of land, but seldom on land. A bowl of rice and a fish constituting a diet that varies but little all through life. But with it all, there seems to be a general atmosphere of domestic peace and content.
How else does spring make you feel? Oh, I don't know, happy. Free? Mm -hmm. Free. <laughs> Free, you've Fun just got names. <laughs> and um, green trees and water and birds and things. Well, and what, how do they make you feel? What do you want to do? Run. Run? Yes, all the way down there and back in. In Go London? Mm, anywhere. I see you started off spring in the right way. Yes. <laughs> How else has it affected you? Oh, I don't know. I think you sort of liven up again, don't you? Winter time, you're, you're just dead. You stay indoors and work. As soon as the sun comes out, well, you just drop everything and go, don't you? Go really? where? Out, anywhere. And how does it affect you? Well, it doesn't affect me a lot. Um, but I noticed today that uh, my daughter's tortoise has come out of hibernation and that's wandering around the garden again now. It makes me feel elated and um, I think it's the best time for exploring London to walk around in the nice weather. It makes me feel a bit mad at times, you know, like that. So. Mad in what way? What do you do? Well, uh, it doesn't usually affect, well, as I say, my friends and I, it's about 11 o'clock at night, you know, when somebody rings up and go out for a drink, you know, and then you... Well, the other night we went round. Oh, well, the pub's closed then. Well, we went sort of, you know, round London in our night clothes, you know, sort of. London in your night clothes? Yes, you know, night is and all that. How does spring fever affect you? Well, a great deal, I think. It makes me feel much gayer, much happier. Um, primroses, you know, the lot. Um, it makes me buy things. <laughs> when you put on your new spring clothes, does it make you feel different? Definitely, without a doubt. Um, first of all, the pleasure in buying them. Um, getting out of tweeds and getting out of heavy, heavy clothes and getting into summer clothes make you feel lighter, make you feel you want to bounce along and just feel gay and you get into wide frilly petticoats and they just seem to do something as well. Um, I think they do something to the men as well, they make them more, you know, they make you look at you much more if you're in summer clothes, they do somehow. What it about boyfriends? Um, oh, we change, change them. them rapidly at this time of year. Why? All of a sudden you just change from the winterites to the summerites. Yes. There's certain men you go out with in the winter and certain you go out with in the summer. Um, some men are better in the winter, you know, when it's fireside, co you know, nice and cosy around the fireside. Mm -hmm. And then there are better sportsmen in the summer when you get out in the sun and go down to the beach and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, dark glasses on. Yeah, <laughs> you know, those types. But uh, definitely a change of men.